Hey there, Dr. Jacob Weatherby from Optimal DX and the ODX Academy. Welcome back to another Functional Five. In today's presentation, we're going to be looking at acid base balance. This is kind of a wrap up of the last five different presentations and uh, short posts that I posted on the various different electrolytes. So we've looked at sodium, potassium, the sodium potassium ratio, we've looked at CO2, we've looked at chloride, we've looked at the anion gap. And today I'm kind of wanting to pull all of those together to look at two very specific things in acid-base balance. We will be looking at uh, metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. Now, of course, this is an extraordinarily complex topic. And so really what I'm wanting to do is how can we use uh, those particular biomarkers on a chemistry screen to give us a sense of trends, a trend towards metabolic acidosis or a trend towards metabolic acidosis. And uh, that's the wonderful thing about uh, the chemistry screen, about the ODX application and the functional health report, is this ability to look at trend analysis. So um, this is not uh, diagnostic. We're not diagnosing metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis. What we're doing is kind of uh, conveying a trend or a movement in that particular direction. And if you want to, to dive into it in a bit more depth, then there are plenty of other testing methodologies that you can look at. So we're going to be looking at today, um, initially going to be revisiting uh, CO2 and chloride and looking at their relationship to um, acidosis and alkalosis. So uh, let's dive into that. So uh, CO2 and acid-base balance. I think one of the things to remember, we've, we covered CO2 obviously in one of our previous presentations. And one of the things that we looked at is this concept that serum CO2 is really bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is one of the reserve alkaline elements. And its job is to neutralize metabolic acids, such as hydrochloric and lactic acids. Now, it's not the most sensitive measurement of pH, but serum CO2 can be pretty helpful for evaluating that trend towards a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. Now, if you can imagine, if you have elevated levels of an alkaline element in your blood, such as CO2, then you're probably going to be trending towards more of a metabolic alkalotic situation. And if you have low levels of an alkali element in your blood, low serum CO2, then you're probably going to be trending towards metabolic acidosis. Now, let's take a look at chloride. Chloride, um, along with the sodium, potassium, and the CO2, also plays a role in maintaining acid-base balance. Now, it has an inverse relationship with CO2 levels. So, metabolic acidosis, you're going to see an increased chloride level and a decreased CO2 level. Uh, remember, we're talking about how the CO2 alkaline element, low levels seen with a metabolic acidosis. Now, a metabolic alkalosis, you're going to have a decreased chloride and an increased CO2. Now, chloride ions are excreted along with other cations, such as sodium and potassium, uh, during diuresis. So it's lost in the urine. And also, it's uh, lost when we have uh, bouts of vomiting and or diarrhea, which can have serious implications for acid-base balance. Now, let's talk a little bit about metabolic alkalosis. In metabolic alkalosis, there are increasing levels of bicarbonate ion in relationship to the H+. Now, some of the causes of a bicarbonate increase include diuretics, excess vomiting, excess secretion of aldosterone, excess ingestion of alkaline drugs, excess consumption of bicarbonate. So what about some of the signs and symptoms here? Uh, alkaline urine, water and fluid retention, poor digestion or hypochlorhydria, joint and muscle pain, leg and muscle cramps and tetany, uh, urinary calculi or urinary stones, cold, clammy hands and feet, uh, dizziness, excitability of the nervous system, and low blood pressure. Now, what about the uh, functional blood chemistry analysis pattern? So you're going to see an increase in that serum CO2 or the bicarbonate. Remember that increase, obviously, with that alkali element as well. And that's going to be increased above 30 in metabolic alkalosis. Uh, your chloride levels will be decreased below about 100. Potassium levels may or may not be decreased below 4. Um, you might want to do some further in-office uh, lab testing. I cover uh, acid base in quite a lot of depth in my in-office lab testing book, Functional Terrain Analysis, where we look at four different tests that you can do in an in-clinic setting. We look at salivary pH, 
we look at breath holding time, we look at respiration rate, and we look at urine pH studies. And looking at the patterns between these can really help us elucidate a pattern, not only towards metabolic alkalosis or metabolic acidosis, but its counterparts, the respiratory acidosis and the respiratory alkalosis. Let's take a look now at metabolic acidosis. So in a metabolic acidosis, the body is in a state of increasing levels of H plus ion. So what are some of the causes of this? In efficient formation of ATP, that can increase the uh, output of H plus into the body. Incomplete digestion or oxidation of macronutrients. Direct administration or production of acids. So it could be intake of dietary acids. It could be aspirin use. Remember aspirin, salicylic acid. Uh, anytime you're putting acids into the body can uh, increase uh, uh, the administration will increase the level of H+. You can also have the loss of bicarbonate, so that would be acute and chronic diarrhea or vomiting. Increasing uh, kidney stress, this is a failure to process the H+, could be anaerobic respiration or lack of exercise, increased stress and liver dysfunction. So let's take a look at some of the signs and symptoms. So you're going to see an acid urine. You're going to see excess fluid excretion and dehydration. You're going to see anxiety and nervousness, poor digestion, hyperactivity and insomnia, poor retention of minerals, high blood pressure and rapid heart rate, fatigue, warm, dry hands and feet, and dry mouth. So let's finish up here by looking at the functional blood chemistry analysis pattern. Your serum CO2 is going to be decreased below 25 in a metabolic acidosis. Remember, the bicarbonate is being used up to buffer the increasing levels of H plus in the body. Chloride levels will be increased above 106. Your anion gap is going to be increased above 12. And you might see levels of potassium going up as well above 4.5. Uh, metabolic acidosis drives potassium from the cell. And when that potassium leaves the cell, it increases the serum levels of potassium. And like we also mentioned with alkalosis, you can do further studies of this in an in-clinic setting using breath holding time, respiration rate, salivary pH, and urine pH. So that wraps up this presentation on acid-base balance, how we can use those electrolytes in elucidating trends towards metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis. This is definitely something that we look at and we measure and report on in the ODX application, the functional health report. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, go to optimaldx.com. We have a free trial for you to jump in and start looking at your blood reports through this lens of a functional medicine, functional output. So my name is Dr. Dick and Weatherby from OptimalDX. Thanks for watching and uh, join us again for a future Functional Five.